Hey everybody, this is Cricket here, going to be giving you guys a Force Strategy Gaming cast, and this is going to be a cast from, from one of my tournaments. Of course, um, my very first video with Force Strategy Gaming, it was actually a game between in uh, between Shooter and Spanishwa, and this is going to be the same deal. This is actually one of the set of games from that uh, from that matchup, and of course, Shooter is our red Protoss player. I'm going to go and start slowing things down, and he is spawning in the bottom left-hand corner, and Spanishwa is our yellow Zerg spawning in the bottom right hand corner and it looks right off the bat he's going to be taking a very um, very gutsy very ballsy um, quick expansion to the gold so this is Kulas Ravine and yes this was not in the ladder pool when this tournament was going on but uh, as loser gets to pick the map shooter like this map in beta and so he wanted to go for it and so uh, this de this is a very unfriendly map to Zerg or, uh, generally but we're gonna see some very creative play from Shooter uh, I'm sorry from Spanishua that I think is definitely worth taking a look at and um, I hope that you guys can eventually start to do it in your play now this does require a little bit heftier of an APM but it can still be done um, rather effectively regardless so um, our Protoss player nothing too crazy he is still trying trying to scout out the gold, doesn't know quite what's going on, and if his timings are on, he should know that this gas and pool is a little too late in order, um, these, these definitely should be done sooner if that's what he initially was going for, and there's definitely not enough drones, so it should kind of scream that there is an expansion somewhere, even though he ran by and saw that nothing was going on. Now, it does look like our Protoss player is going uh, nothing too crazy, getting a gateway and cyber core, so uh, sometimes a lot of Protoss players will go two gates, so to fake early pressure or give early pressure, or do a gateway into Forge to go and get an early upgrade, maybe cannons, that will um, allow them to expand quicker than they normally would. But it does look like Spanishwa has completed the gas steal, so this will uh, greatly hinder any kind of heavy, heavy sentry build. It actually makes it a little bit more difficult to go ahead and do like a three gate expansion. Um, we do see that Spanishwa has transferred majority of his drones to the gold. Of course, uh, I don't, I believe Shooter has not even scouted this out yet. So um, as there's not very many drones left, of course, if you have the gold transfer majority of your drones there as long as you can think you can hold it his first queen is up from his uh, um, from his main base and it looks like he's gonna be getting metabolic boost and his first initial four zerglings to go ahead and scout things out and what's going on we see warp gate tech not really getting chrono boosted it doesn't look like he's gonna be going for any kind of three gate but it, I mean I'm sorry any kind of four gate all in um, but it does look like he is getting his third gate down um, warp gate tech is halfway done there's the uh, first stalker out and zealot blocking and there's the high because he just realized what's been going on and the income from Spanishwa has been able to skyrocket despite all of the chrono boosts from the nexus of our Protoss player. So uh, I'm going to definitely have to be pausing um, a few times to make sure that I catch everything that goes on in this game, but I hope that you guys stay with me. Of course, he knows that he was scouted, and generally most players, they will freak out when they see this gold. They'll be like, holy crap, I've got to knock this out immediately. And Spanish Juan knows that, so he's going to go and get a spine, placing an overlord over the top just to get a little bit of view of what might be going around. He gets the Zanaga. He knows something is coming. There's a probe there. Probably going to be laying down a proxy pylon as well to go ahead and... Uh, reinforce very quickly because warp gate tech definitely just finished so he's going to be getting that pile on probably up shortly maybe not maybe i was just joking uh, but we do see a stargate coming so three gate stargate this is a very ace kind of build that he used a lot in the uh, esl that was so effective so three gate into a stargate build very effective but what will hinder this is the fact that this um has been uh greatly I don't know, minimized because of the gas steal and because he had to push out so quickly, he wasn't able to go ahead and kill that geyser, unfortunately. So um, now it looks like Shooter's troops are getting really stuck up in here. He got kind of caught out in the open. Spanishwa taking a very good um, at getting getting good position, waiting for the Protoss units to get out of position. We saw a little bit of awesome Zergling Micro keeping those Lings alive as much as possible. We see the health bars getting very low, and these two Zealots are definitely going to be able to go, but he is trying to... Oh, man, every every troop counts in this battle. That's definitely for sure. More Lings coming, but I think this is probably just a bad rally point. The proxy pylon is up, so Spanishwa has got to be very careful how he handles this. Now, um, it does look like he went ahead and got the layer at the gold. He is planning on keeping that, and he's going to get a Spire. He says, if you're going to take... Uh, if you're going to take any base you're going to be going for my gold i'm going to make that my main base the most well defended base so that's what he's going he's uh, just using speedlings to defend keeping those immobile zealots at bay and it looks like he's going to be bringing 
a few at his base, hoping that maybe he can get in, but it does look like Shooter did go ahead and wall off, so um, uh, the Stalker at the back is going to be able to probably ward these away, but it looks like Spanish was going to keep going for the gold, um, but even though he already got the gold, yeah. So anyway, Forge going down because he knows that this pylon's going down, There's, um, he does not have, ooh, he can warp in more units. He needs to do that now, uh, but he's, he's kind of battling between where he needs to be warping in units. But the Spire is uh, three-fourths of the way done, Forge is halfway done, um, but it is getting attacked by all of these Lings and other. He needs to go ahead and warp in a Sentry to go ahead and uh, get off. There we go. There's some Zealots going to be able to wart, wart, thwart off this attack. So these Zealots are probably going to be coming back home. Or they're gonna actually see if they can get any damage done on these uh, on these drones. Of course, the spire is officially up. There's a phoenix out for shooter as well. And uh, I forgot to tell you guys, this is very high level master play. Uh, Spenny Schwa is uh, very he's way ahead of 3k uh, um, masters, and shooter I believe is sitting around 3k as well. So uh, both very high skilled players. So don't don't. Uh, discount them quite yet. So he's only been making speedlings this entire time, so he has a good bit of gas um, out. So nine mutas are actually going to be able to come out right out of the gate, and of course he's going to get that uh, plus one attack for them. These lings, unfortunately, are going to go down to the three zealots, but there is nothing that can hit air, and these mutas are definitely out on the field, and this is very unfortunate for um, Shooter. But there are phoenixes out, so uh, with good micro, this could be very deadly, as Spanish was not going to be able to chase down those phoenixes as they can just shoot and scoot all day long. So he's going to go and try and clean up these zealots to prevent for any damage going on. It looks like this is going to be a zealot phoenix kind of army, but it does look like he's, the zealots are kind of getting um, a little picked off there. They're not... Uh, going straight in for the kill, but I don't think they'd be able to do much with that spine there anyway. And I'm going to go ahead and let's look, even though there's action going on, we see a Nidus and a Hydralisk Den. So Annie's going to go and get the third. So having this gold really allows you to open up a lot of different possibilities, lets you be a little bit more, um, uh, I don't want to say riskier, but um, it allows you to do a whole lot more things like getting a third getting Hydras and Aspire and Nidus all at the same time. And so this is going to be a very unique strategy of using very small amounts of army, but using them very skillfully and very using a lot of tricks. So we see that um, a Shooter's front wall is getting attacked a whole lot. Looks like six Mutas are out. Weapons level one is not even close to being done for a Protoss. And it looks like Spanish was finally able to kind of lessen that Phoenix number, even though he's lost a good bit of Mutas himself. But it looks like he is continuing to pump down, uh, pump out a lot of Hydras. So those are becoming, and he is getting Overlord speed, keeping a few Lings at the front just to um, keep it, uh, keep a lot of pressure going on, getting a lot of Mutas, and uh, it looks like Shooter is going for his uh, expansion. And these Mutas, what are they doing around here? Oh, he's getting a place for the Nidus. So he's going to be giving a place for the Nidus, and let's look what's in here, those Hydras that he was talking about. So he's forcing all of Shooter's army to be up here because that's where all the pressure is going. He wants him to put all of his army up here. And so what that's going to cause is, oh no, the Nidus is out. A bunch of Hydras are on here attacking, and so it looks like Shooter's going to be bringing his base around. But pause. Okay. So obviously... Obviously, this army would probably get, it would be very close, um, especially with the Phoenix lifting up a Hydra. I definitely think that um, Spanish Shaw would lose this fight. And of course, his army is at the front and they can't do anything. But what is going on? He, he's putting pressure at the front. He's putting pressure at the top. And then what is he doing? He's making another Nidus at the bottom of the base because he knows Shooter's entire army is going up here to try and protect this expansion. Okay, I'm going to go and unpause the action here. Um, more Hydras coming in, and of course, he doesn't want to fight this. Uh, Spanishua wants the whole entire army. Uh, Hydralists are a little bit immobile, kind of push him back, and what is he doing? Funneling them in here. This one comes out just at the perfect time. More Lings coming in, more Hydras. These Mutas have been a are going to be able to break down the wall so these Lings can get in through the front. And this is pretty much the game, a shooter's army has to come all the way down here. He's already doing a probe transfer, but when this is in your base, there's almost nothing you can do. Still funneling in more troops. Let's go and look at the APM Spanish while sitting at a huge 182. It does not require this high, but it definitely, definitely helps. And of course, you can already begin to see how strong um, Spanish Schwa is playing against Shooter. There's the GG, and uh, that is going to be the game. So I hope that you guys, as Zerg players, be creative. Now, the, a lot of what allowed him to do this was the gold expansion 
and taking out a lot of the early troops, not letting him build up a big force in order to attack the gold. Those were a lot of the key things that allowed this, allowed the kind of army composition to work. But regardless of the attack, I don't want to really focus on that. I want to focus on the fact of what Spenny Shua did. Um, he only made a few mutas. And, and that was in order just to fly them around. And, and of course, we saw he got Overlord speed as well. So it, he didn't even really need the mutas in order for this to work. He could have just went Hydra, Hydra Nidus. And this actually would have been uh, even, it would have just been as, as more effective as what he already did. So Nidus in here, forcing the entire army to walk its way up here. And then what does he do? Brings the mutas back around here to Nidus in the back and taking out all the tech structures. So I hope that this has uh, maybe inspired some play for Zerg players to uh, just stray away from Ling Baneling, Roach Hydra, you know, mix it up a little bit, use a little bit of Nidus play. I hope this has really inspired you guys. So this is uh, a Force Strategy Gaming cast, and my name is Cricket. Once, uh, as always, if you guys enjoy this cast, there's going to be a link to my channel in the bottom of this description, and I hope that you guys have enjoyed this. Uh, come check out my channel. This is Cricket. I'm out.